Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and I find all sorts of maps to be inspiring, especially transportation maps, and so this is a map of the London Underground, but it's from 2040. It's obviously unofficial, because I'm not a time traveller, but instead it uses all of the projects which are currently in construction, or awaiting funding, or in some stage of development, and puts them all onto this tube map. The cool thing about this is this actually came from a 2018 Reddit post, and so this is from the past, and it's correctly predicted the present, which was the future to them, in quite a few different ways. For one, you can see all the way down here, it's got the two brand new stations at Nine Elms and Battersea Power Station. That's right, this included Battersea Power Station Station before it was added, and it also has the brand new Overground Station over here at Barking Riverside. That did not exist when they made this, as well as, of course, a whole new line in the form of the Elizabeth Line between Whitechapel and Paddington over here, uh, so this purple line you can see, and all the way out to the eastern Shenfield, and also all the way out to the west in Reading. They predicted that Reading would become a part of London in 2023. I mean, it's on the London map. It's got to be part of London now. And so if you think about it, uh, this is already a pretty decent prediction of the present, but how well does it predict the future? Let's go into all of the changes that will be happening between now and 17 years from now, as it now is, because this, again, is incredibly interesting to me. And we'll start with the least interesting change, because, you know, there's a lot happening here. They split up certain lines. They change track from one line to others. There's a whole brand new line in there you might spot that goes out to way different places. Uh, but I want to start off the most uninteresting one, because did you know, they're considering expanding the trams down at South Wimbledon. That's right, they want to add a new tram link down to Sutton. This is one of those, like, they're always talking about it sort of plans, because South London is notoriously unconnected. If you look at this green, this light green line right here, it is a tramway, because there are, again, there's trains in South London, but there's not really any underground trains, so maybe they could fix that with trams is always the solution. The only other solution that's really easy is currently the Bakerloo line, Line ends at Elephant and Castle. However, this map, again, a very handy map, uh, shows that actually you could extend it, and they've been talking about extending the Bakerloo line for a very long time, all the way out to the east to places like Lewisham, uh, and New Cross Great Gate to connect with the overground there, but you could also extend even further than that, out to Catford Bridge, out to Beckenham Junction, or even all the way down to Hayes. So, going down to Hayes is a bit ambitious. Honestly, even going to Beckenham Junction is a bit ambitious, but the idea of the Bakerloo line going to South London makes a lot of sense. Every tube line that starts on the north and goes south eventually hits, uh, you know, something. The northern line goes all the way down to Morden. You can see the Victoria line even goes to Brixton, and that's fully underground. And so the Bakerloo line stopping right in zone one slash two uh, is kind of a waste at Elephant and Castle. So having some brand new stops out over here makes some extra sense, especially given that there are now other things for it to connect to. The DLR, the overground, the, is that the tram link over there? That is the tram link, boy. We love to connect our trams up over here, and so maybe you could do something about that. Speaking of doing things, uh, something else that I think is incredibly cool is that uh, I didn't even know about this till this map. Uh, there is a plan to change the, because uh, right now, if you look at the uh, district line, uh, it currently goes to too many places. Have you have you seen how many places it goes to? It's like, it's it's impossible to actually look at this and work it out, because it's like, yeah, well, there's this there's this uh, Earl's Court to Kensington patch. I don't think that operates all day. There's Edgeware, like, you can see how it just goes goes to too many different places. It's a really simple line between uh, Gloucester Road and Upminster. Sh oh, I should have mispronounced it. Gloucester Road and Upminster. Sorry, that's the correct pronunciation. Uh, you can see there's this real nice uh, like a spot right here where it's just nice and straight and then it gets all messed up in the West End So why not take away some of these stops the easiest ones are Kensington and Ealing Broadway Because then you could have it just be three separate branches rather than five over here And so yeah Ealing Broadway uh, Especially would make sense as part of the Piccadilly line because as you can see uh, right now as of this again This was the future at the time, but now it's the present uh, This would add a new way to connect to the Elizabeth line to get to Heathrow right now There is huge overcrowd of this there's often overcrowding, I should say, between Heathrow and Central London, because there's one tube line that takes you, and so why not allow people who are on the Piccadilly line, say in Central or King's Cross, to go all the way out to Ealing Broadway, connect onto the Elizabeth line, and then have a slightly faster train to Central, uh, to, to out, out to the airport, or vice versa. Uh, it also allow people on the Elizabeth line to change to Ealing Broadway, then change, I don't know, like, for example, onto the Circle line at South Kensington. There's all these sorts of new connections you can make by switching that track 
over from the district line to the Piccadilly. And they already share it, so why not just do that? It's also already on the way to this weird Piccadilly branch that goes up towards uh, Uxbridge, I think it is. So why not just change it over? That's a thing you could propose. Also a thing that I think is interesting is the idea of splitting up the Northern Line. So right now the Northern Line looks like this, uh, as, as you can see. Uh, after they added the separate branch down here to Battersea Power Station and Nine Elms, it says it's in zone two, but that's a lie by the way. But it, as, as you can see, like after they added this uh, to the map, you can see there's this clear problem that the Northern Line splits in two three separate times. And it only is linked here at Camden Town, and it's only linked over here at Kennington. If you just made Kennington to, and you know, like you could say like, well, it's connected at those stations. What can you do? Well, here's the thing. There are lots of other tube lines that are connected at a station. Uh, the, the, I, I know, like, if you look at any example here, you can see that, like, oh, yeah, um, I, I don't know, what, what's an example? Embankment, you wouldn't say that the circle, the district, and the, but also the Northern Line and the Bakerloo Line, you wouldn't say that all of those stations are the same state, you know, they're not the same line just because they serve the same station. Uh, they're going in the same direction, in the case of the green and the yellow and the, uh, the brown and the black, uh, but you can see that they're not necessarily uh, the same line just because of that. And so the Northern Line logically doesn't need to stay the same just because it shares two stations. It could in fact be split into two, and so that's what they propose doing. Having a Northern Line 1 that goes from Battersea Power Station up through central London to Camden Town and Edgware, and then having a Northern Line 2 that goes from High Barnet or Mill Hill East all the way down through central London on the East Branch, and then down out to Morden. This would give you two separate lines for two separate purposes, and honestly, it makes you, when you look at the map with it, you're like, why did we ever have them together to begin with? The answer as to why this hasn't been done yet is currently Camden Town. I think it has three platforms when it needs four, and there's there's this weird uh, like game of like, they need to share a platform over there. You'd have to expand Camden Town massively, and if you've never been to Camden Town, well, let me show you Camden Town. It's a terrible, it's one of the worst stations to go to. Uh, this is it right here. No, that's Mornington Crescent. This is this is Camden Town. It's a terrible station to go to. Honestly, terrible area to go to. I bet it was cool uh, like 20 years ago, but right now it's just way overcrowded all the time. It's a nightmare, and every time I go there, I'm like, what have I, what have I done to myself to deserve this? Why am I going to Camden Town? It's just two little halves of a building behind a bank, apparently, and uh, yeah, it's just there's just no space space for all the stuff going on in there. So you'd have to expand that station massively. You'd have to separate the platforms. And that's something they intend to do before 2040, but not right now, apparently. Uh, yeah, at Kennington, it works just fine. So it's literally just expand this one station and then you get a brand new underground line. I think, if you know, if I'm in charge of naming here, which of course I am because this is my video, um, I would say that the, uh, if you're gonna have two Northern lines, I think there should be a Northern line and a Southern line. What sense does it make to call it the Northern line when it goes so far south anyway? So so there's the southern line, which goes down to Morden, and there's the northern line, which goes out to... Honestly, the problem is the left branch goes, like, not so far in both directions, but you could expand this if you wanted to, because now you've got a short line that doesn't go very far into South London. Boom. What's that? New ideas. Speaking of new ideas, uh, Crossrail is the the brand new uh, train line that goes from Reading to Shenfield. It's purple. You, you know it about it by now if you're eight minutes deep into a London Underground video. If you don't know about it by now, actually, let's let's show you it on the on the current tube map. Uh, you just gotta you just gotta hit transport, right? Where's transport? This is not how you find transport. It's transport in here. Transport is not in here. But you know, what? just a man. Okay, transport. There we go. So as you can see, um, there is this uh, there's this absolutely delightful uh, like you know, can you see anything actually? You know, what? there we go. The purple. Lo look at that. The purple line right here. Wow, isn't this a revolutionary idea? Uh, it's not actually, they used existing rail lines. And so the same idea would be to use existing rail lines to make the same thing happen again for cross rail too. Have a bunch of rail lines out in the southwest from Shepparton or Hampton Court or Chessington South or Epsom uh, come all into one big central branch, which currently ends at Waterloo. I guess currently ends at Clapham Junction. They wouldn't be going out to Waterloo. Then make a new set of rail lines that would go through Kings Road, Chelsea, Victoria. Oh, wow, this is a weird route. I, I thought it was going out to Hackney. I guess it's coming to Dalston, Kingsland. Then out to Seven Sisters. Then connect to a new set of rail lines in the north. Honestly, I the, again, like uh, the, the way Crossrail 2 would work is a really interesting idea. It's not actually that expensive to just to get a new tunnel in the center and then use your existing rail lines. Would it be very essential? A lot of people in the Southwest probably think so. Would it achieve a lot if it just goes to Victoria 
and then Tottenham Court Road, and then King's Cross. Well, actually, if it goes there, it may maybe it could be. Uh, but yeah, ultimately, creating new capacity for central London is what these projects are really all about. And so is that a good idea? I think so. I think there's, I, I think ultimately, though, they've announced they'll have four separate terminus. There's Shepparton, then there's Hampton Court. There's, I think in reality, they'd pick like two of these because having four branches is unwieldy. Having four sets of trains all converge into one could be unwieldy, but maybe that's just a super idea to make it really good. I mean, I mean and ultimately, if you look at the, uh, the Crossrail 1, it goes out to three separate places. There's Heathrow Terminal 4, Heathrow Terminal 5, and Reading. So maybe it makes exactly the same sense. If you don't run the train super frequently, have one every five minutes to each of these stations, and one every, tw you know, like one every 20 minutes to each of these five to four stations, and now that's one every five minutes in the central core. You, you, there's, there's smart ways you could do this, probably. I don't know if that's their intention. Uh, but Crossrail 2 is currently on hold while they wait for funding. So will this happen? It'll probably change again by the time it happens. Ultimately, getting funding for rail projects is about getting people excited and being like, ooh, this will benefit me. And uh, is that the way we should have rail be funded? I don't know. All I do know is what about a brand new set of overground tracks? Right now, the overground looks like this. Is this the overground in its hull? It always looks weird when you see it on a physical map. Uh, the overground looks like this. It's basically a ring network around London, at least Clapham Junction to Wilston Junction to Dalston Junction to Surrey Keys is. Uh, you know, you can see there's a circle going around that, those four, with it kind of just going out to other places like Barking, Richmond, uh, West Croydon and Watford Junction, but there's a new idea, a very exciting idea if you like trains, uh, to instead have this brand new branch using existing tracks basically from Halston to Neeston to Cricklewood to West Hampstead. For the Cricklewood to West Hampstead se section, there is already train tracks there, but you have to expand them. For these sections, you have to like, you've, they've already got the, tr uh, you know, the, the track already exists, but it's used for freight basically. Uh, and it's a really fun idea, a lot of them have been proposed a lot. This is one of those ideas I look at though and I'm like, what are you really adding with this loop? It's the the overground already serves West Hampstead, so it's just three brand new stations, one of which is already well connected, one of which already is well connected, and the other of which is okay, already well connected. It would basically be a way to move people from the Bakerloo to the Jubilee to the you know the what is that National Rail the uh, the Thameslink line, but also the Jubilee the Tem you know I it really makes you question what is the actual purpose in terms of connection. Uh, obviously, uh, it, it's again like it's adding capacity, but do you need to add additional capacity there? I think by the time they end up finalizing this, it'll probably go somewhere that isn't just West Hampstead into a giant loop. Maybe you could replace some sections. Maybe you could do some fun stuff. I'm not too sure. All I do know is that that has been every single brand new uh, section of <laughs> track and uh, line added to the map by 2040. I think it's insane to look at this and say in 2040, there'll still be an overground service between Romford and Upminster. Is that on this map actually? It's not, This it's missing because it's that unimportant. Uh, th there's a lot of weird, you know, like oddities you'd hope would be fixed by then. Uh, these are just some of them, of course. Again, like, I mean, look, look at this, for example. Houston having a connector blob that's that big between two stations that are the same station or Camden You know, there's a lot of weird like things about the map that you would hope be fixed by then will it actually happen? I don't know for sure. I mean even even like if you look at this right like okay the the overground splits in three after Surrey Keys to New Bermondsey actually that's that's a new station I forgot to mention wow New Bermondsey not Bermondsey you know, I don't know why you can't say it, Bermondsey. So I'm going to say Bermondsey. Uh, if you look at Bur Bur there is a giant gap right now between Surrey Keys and Queens Road Peckham. Should I, should I show you actually? This is this is Queens Road Peckham, and this is Surrey Keys. Do you see the gap between those two roundels? Uh, wait, actually, let's use measurement. It is a 2.25 kilometer gap between those, whereas between the previous two stations it's 500 meters, and between the previous three stations, it's 900 meters. There's three stations in 900 meters, and then none for two kilometers. So putting a station over here somewhere, if I'm not mistaken, they already have the space for it and everything. Like it's it's around here somewhere. You can see where they want to, there you go. You can see where a station could easily exist. I think it's here. Honestly, it looks like it's here, uh, but they just haven't built it because they are waiting on some development, which has now actually happened. Also, there's a football club here. I think people don't like it very much. Also, speaking of things people don't like very much, uh, this video, uh, I think that is everything. I, I think ultimately, 
when you look at this, you can see there's, all bu there's a bunch of like spurs that look like they could and should go somewhere. Battersea Power Station being ex extended down to Clapham Junction, Battersea Power Station just being extended anywhere would help connectivity in the southwest. Having New Cross, this little weird branch off to the right here, having that go somewhere could help expand connectivity in the southeast. If you just if you just make it connect to something else over there, uh, you could achieve some wonderful things. Uh, just the DLR, the the tram link, the, the there's you know there's there's all sorts of ways you can make London better connected. Uh, most of my ideas are just by looking visually. I'm sure the people whose job it is to actually decide this stuff are making really deep analysis, but that's not my job. My job is just to say, wow, isn't this 2040 tube map cool? Don't you agree? And uh, yeah, I think it's really cool to look at a city and always see this stuff developing and going forwards. But I also personally think if there's gonna be something huge and new that happens, the realistic answer will be the rail and tube map. Because uh, if you look at this uh, map of overground services, they didn't build these from scratch. They just took over existing rail lines and said, that's ours now, we're calling it the overground. They made it cheap, they made it reliable, they made it affordable. I guess affordable is cheap. Uh, you know, actually, I guess affordable and not cheap. They made it affordable, reliable, and sustainable. There we go. I don't know if they did, but that's a nice word that rhymes. Uh, so you can look at this map and you can see, yeah, they just took over existing rail lines. So realistically, more of the services in this map, like, uh, you know, you know how I mentioned New Cross goes nowhere and it's kind of weird? It could go out to St. John's or Blackheath or Woolwich Dockyard, or, you know, like you could have a, a rail line going out from Deptford to Greenwich. You could, just by taking some of these existing rail lines, starting to brand them London, uh, and then uh, having them keep going out to wherever they go, you can extend the uh, London Rail Network. Ultimately, all you need for that is having a Prime Minister and a London Mayor who both get aboard of like the same team of like, what is good for transport around the capital? And is that what we want? And uh, will that happen? Ultimately, again, like you can see all the services out in Chessington South or Epsom or Shepparton or you know, wherever else. These are already services that exist. You just gotta dig new tunnels for them and make it magically new. And so that's what they would do uh, for this. That is what they would do to make Crossrail 2. Ultimately, every piece of rail infrastructure is very, very expensive for every new mile of track you build. So it's way cheaper to just say, what if we use existing track but way better. And so that's what London ends up doing because it's a giant megalopolis. Look at all these rail lines. Does, does your local, you know, government rail map look like this? If it doesn't, then you don't live in London. And that is the conclusion of this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. I decided in the middle of this to change it from a third channel video to a second channel video. So hopefully you agree with that. If not, then check out my main channel linked in the description. I didn't realize I've been making this joke for like a year. My main my main channel that I link in the description is the Andrew Andrews channel. So go give a subscribe to my main channel. Would appreciate it a lot. Where you can see videos that aren't like this one. Uh, but I am making a, a small series of... Uh, Mon money philosophy videos if you're curious about what I'm up to today. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you at Turkey Street. <laughs> Is there really a station called Turkey Street? How have I never known about Turkey Street? You know, there, there cannot be a Turkey Street. I, that, that, that is, that sounds ridiculous. Where are you, Turkey Street? Are you Turkey Street? Are you, uh, Turkey Street, wow. There is a Turkey Street. Do you think it's named after the country or the bird? Let's see if there's any, uh, it's t named after Turkey Brook, apparently. But there is a tasty chicken and pizza, as well as the Highway Conservative Club. Interesting they're on the same street. You'd expect more separation. You know, I've got to go to Turkey Street sometime, do some on the ground research. See see what's really going on here. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks pretty rural, right? Well, they've got a bike shelter. That's nice. Your, your bike would not be stolen if you just put it in this little wooden shelter, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, anyway, hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day because I'll see you in the next one, okay? Interesting, people live on Turkey Street. They don't seem to have, no, it doesn't look the nicest of ways. Although actually, there you go, look at this. This is way too big of a house. There's no way this, this has got to be like a hotel or something. No one lives in a house this big on a street like this, right? Also very, you know, okay, we, we gotta stop this video at some point. Hope you all enjoyed. I could spend forever just dicking off on Google Maps, but I won't do that to you today. Also, why are they allowed to, you know, l let's not, let's not think about any of this. Let's just say, Overfoot Bridge, Turkey Street, goodbye. <laughs> Why is it called Turkey Street? I, I know there's Turkey Brook there, and the street goes near the brook, but you've got to have a turkey or something. You've got to, you've got to commit to the name, but it, they just don't, they just don't, it just, it just doesn't, there's Oz Royal Kebab, that sounds like Australian Royal Kebab. Lamb and chicken Turkish kebabs, you know, I'll take it. 
Turkish Street will lead you to Turkish food eventually. But why Oz? They're not Australian. That's 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 misleading advertising. I would like to apply to. I, I would like to make a complaint to the uh, the advertising standards agency. I'm not sure if that's the right body, but I'd like to do it anyway. They've got a nice subway, and uh, so that's that's good, I guess. Anyway, thank you for watching. I think this is the real ending now. Goodbye.